happy to welcome Nev, Magu, and many other many other companies who will do a performance. And your challenge is just like Megan said, said to imagine what's going on in their heads while they're doing it. Nev will tell us a bit about the the history of Capoeira before the performance. So please welcome them. Hi, good evening. Um, I'm here representing uh, a number of groups led by Professor uh, Magu from Capoeira Nova Alianza. Um, first of all, how many people have heard or seen Capoeira before? Okay, everyone, this is a great audience. <laughs> how many people know where Capoeira comes from? Where? Of course. Okay, so I would have just wanted to get you started on a little bit of history of Capoeira. Um, it has a very interesting and very enigmatic history. There are, of course, not a lot of written records of the uh, people that were brought to Brazil for, uh, on the slave boats, but um, what they do, what the legend says, is that Capoeira started on the Sanzalas, um, and that these were ritualized fights that people would practice. They would be punished for training any kind of martial art or combat technique. And so what the slaves would do in Brazil is they would ritualize um, a fight. <coughs> they would disguise it as a dance, add music to it, um, and then say, uh, we're not fighting, we're dancing. And therefore, they would be able to escape punishment. Now, this is absolutely uncertain. We, don't, we can't, don't know if this is true. It's a very nice story. But what we do know is that when the slave ships arrived in Brazil, um, the nationalities were split up, and they were split up for a very specific reason, and that was because they um, wanted to be sure that people from different cultures didn't mix. And what that ended up doing was, first of all, there's, there's no real criollo in, in, in Brazil, as you may know, um, but also it meant that a lot of uh, Brazilian, Afro-Brazilian specifically, cultural traditions are mixes, a little bit of different African nations, and, and uh, Capoeira is probably one of these things that was brought a little bit from a lot of different kinds of cultures and mixed together so that these people could share some kind of cultural identity. We do start to know a little bit more about Capoeira when it gets to around um, the early ni uh, 1900s. Um, there starts to be a movement of capoeira uh, into the cities. And so actually this started before the 1900s. This, this started back in 1808 when, when uh, Don, Don Juan came from Portugal fleeing Napoleon to Brazil. And one of the things he brought with him to Brazil was infrastructure. And he, built, he put more infrastructure into the cities, built roads between the cities, and so people moved into the cities. And these people also brought their slaves and their ex-slaves. And these people started to um, congregate at markets and on docks, and where they congregated, there would be hodas. And so we have documentation of the fact that these hodas existed. Um, these hodas were heavily persecuted from the beginning because they were manifestations, um, they looked a little bit dangerous, and so many of the jail records cite um, capoeirista, or practicing capoeira, as um, being an offense for which someone was put into jail. Um, under pressure from European uh, the Europe, under pressure from Europe, eventually Brazil, it was one of the last Western countries to abolish slavery, and it abolished slavery in 1888, and this is when cup, repression of capoeira became much stronger. So before, uh, the authorities didn't put so much pressure on people. It wasn't, this punishment wasn't so severe for practicing capoeira because the slave owners were very much against their slaves being in jail. Of course, they needed these, they needed these people. They were using these people in order to... Um, you know, make their living. So as soon as slavery was abolished, these people were left um, on the streets without a lot of prospects of jobs, without um, any particular place to live. And um, that's when repression of capoeira became very, very strong. And they could be punished in some cities, like the major cities that practice capoeira were Rio de Janeiro, Salvador, and Recife. Um, it could be punished by as much as torture and mutilation of the people that were involved. Um, just a little tiny bit more <laughs> before I'll let the presentation begin, and that was that what basically resurrected Capoeira from the ashes was two mestres, very important people um, from Salvador, mestre, uh, com, uh, colloquially known as Mestre Bimba and Mestre Pastinha. And Mestre Bimba was the first to form a real school of Capoeira. 
um, Mestre Pastinha, Mestre Bimba founded, founded a school of capoeira which he used to teach the Brazilian elite and even the military. And this became known because of the name of the school. It was, uh, he called his style Luta Regional de, ba de Salvador. Luta Regional de Bahia. <laughs> um, and because of the name of this, it came to be known as Capoeira Regional. So many people will say they practice Capoeira Regional. There's a second Mestre in Salvador at the time who practiced what was a more traditional form, uh, Mestre Pastinha, and he called his game Brincadeira de Angola. And so we, uh, many people will say that we play Brincadeira de Angola. Now, in fact, this is a very simple separation. Modern, many other people at the time were playing capoeira, but these two mestres still have a lot of charisma and people still have a lot of loyalty for, towards these people. Um, so what we're going to show you first is we're going to show you a bit of makulele, which is another cultural manifestation that has been brought into uh, capoeira. Then we're going to fall a little bit with a capoeira brincadeira de Angola, capoeira Angola, and then we're going to move into more contemporary capoeira and capoeira regional. So we hope you enjoy it. Let's start the presentation. Oh, 